think we should be back I'd like you to uh, state that. I move to admit uh, people's uh, exhibit five, which is slow down videos from the Michigan State. Board. Any objection? Only that under the document of completeness, it should be slowed down for the entire incident, and it is not. But I'll address that in my case. So no, very good. The court is going to, uh, subject to your objection, the court is going to uh, allow the evidence. You may proceed with your all right. Um, like to queue up the uh, first uh, and take it from the point in time of the stop until the completion <coughs> of the blows. And I want to uh, be in a position to stop it. Now, this is a different player, is it not? Yes. And uh, can you explain to the jury when they're looking at this particular player how we have what's wrong? Mm -hmm. This is the play button. This is the stop. And this is the fast forward, and this is the reverse. All right. And this is the uh, video that you submitted to your technicians to have uh, put in a capacity to stop frame by frame. Is that correct? And that was, was what I received from them, from that request, yes. And as a result, uh, the video plays significantly slower than the events are taking place. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, could you begin the video, please? Stop it, please. Um, there's an in indicate what the time is, please. Uh, 
We are stopping it at 2158.45, uh, and it's 05 seconds of this play. There's a vehicle uh, in the headlights of the patrol car. Whose vehicle is that? Mr. Dent. And there is an individual to the left. Who is that? Officer Melendez. And uh, is there an object in his right hand? Yes, that's his sidearm. So he has his uh, weapon on holster? Yes. Go ahead, please. Stop, please. We stopped at 21.58.47 and 13 seconds into this player. Uh, the driver's door is open in that particular picture, is that correct? Yes. Uh, is it opened all the way? It doesn't appear to be. And uh, what is Officer Melendez doing? Pointing his weapon in the direction of the door. And there's an individual now crossing uh, behind the bumper of uh, Mr. <coughs> Dent's car. Who is that? Auxiliary Officer uh, John Zielinski. at time stamp 215853, 37 seconds into this player. Uh, Officer Milan does his gun to the left. Yes. Is his weapon pointed at the suspect any longer? No, it's pointed down. And uh, indeed, uh, where is Officer Zelenowski or Reserve Officer Zelenowski? In the door jam. So he's directly in line of fire, uh, Officer Milan does. Objection. It's the same. Is Officer Zelenowski between Officer Melendez and where the driver's seat would be? Yes. Go ahead, please. And back it up, please. Right there, what frame are we on? Timestamp 215855, uh, 45 seconds into this player. Um, I'd like to direct your attention between the two legs of Officer Zelenowski. Uh, there are, appears to be some items. Can you tell me what those are? They look like feet. One on the ground and one coming. Mr. Dent is pulled from the car by Officer Zielinowski and his, both his feet is on the ground right here and Officer Melendez is holstering his sidearm and one arm is reached out towards Mr. Dent. To be clear, that was timestamp 2158.57 and 53 seconds in, into this play. Go ahead. <coughs> Stop, please. 215859, 58 seconds for this player. And um, can you see Mr. Dunn's face at this point in time? Yes. And how is he positioned? Um, on all fours. His two hands are in front of him, and he's on his knees at this point. And do both officers have hands on him or not? Yes. One, I see one hand, one hand extended for... Officer Zulanuski and both hands appear to be on from Officer Melendez. Go ahead. Stop it. 2159.02, on this player. Uh, Describe uh, how Officer Melendez is presently positioned in relationship to Mr. Dunn. On top of his upper body, 
with his left arm wrapped around Officer, I'm sorry, Mr. Dent's neck, and his gloved hand is over Mr. Dent's face. Can you tell what uh, Reserve Officer Zolanowski is doing in this video? Um, it just looks like he's crouched down right now. One hand is, is behind or on Mr. Dent, and this hand is up. Play this a little bit more. Uh, 2159 121 on this form. Can you tell what he's doing there? Yes. Mr. Zielinski. Mr. Zielinski has his hand, it appears across his body, but what that is is a mic where he can key his prep radio from his shoulder area as opposed to having to go to his side. And we heard a dispatch tape where uh, certain items were said and you thought it was Officer Zielinski, is that correct? Yes. So it appears to you from the video that he's uh, that he's speaking uh, back to base in the time between these two calls. Yes, to dispatch. All right. And does uh, go ahead. Stop it. Uh, does Officer Zelenowski have uh, uh, any contact with Mr. Dent in this particular uh, crime? Yes, both of Officer Zelenowski's hands are on Mr. Dent's left arm. Did we get into the record the crime number already? We have not. It's timestamp 215908, 132 of this player. Go ahead. Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. 215909, 136 of this player. Have the blows begun? Yes. And uh, Mr. Denton, uh, where are his hands? Both of his hands are over his face. And where is he getting at? In the top of his head on the right side of his body. And uh, indeed, Officer Zelenowski does not have hold of the uh, left hand at that point? No. Because he's covered, right? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, Please. 21 59 19 timestamp 213 of this player. The balls have stopped. Yes. Can you describe um, Mr. Dent's actions as combative? Objection sustained. Did you see him strike at anyone? Objection. The video speaks for itself. And she said he can have her. Did you see that? No. What did you see him do? Attempt to cover his face. As he was getting punched. Yes. Okay, next clip, please. Very beginning of the second uh, file, timestamp 220047, zero seconds in on this player. Go ahead and uh, start. stop it. Can you identify uh, any of the individuals in this photograph? Yes. Or this video? Who can you identify? Okay, Officer Melendez is almost in the car, looking in the car right here. At the 
the driver's side. At the driver's side. This person here at the rear of Mr. Dent's car on the driver's side at the back rear is office, Auxiliary Officer Loudon, Paul Loudon. This person here is Trooper Hop. And you can identify the troopers by pants because their pants are light and it's got a dark stripe going down the side on the video. Inkster officers have the solid pants. This officer here is Auxiliary Officer John Zelenuski. And this is a little blurry right now. I can't really see okay. the face. And to be fair, that was three seconds into this player timestamp, 220050. <laughs> that person walking out of the screen was um, Kreitzer, Sergeant Kreitzer. Can you see a person on the inside of the car? Yes. Uh, who is it? This is where Officer Melendez entered the car, and that's him right there. His head appears to be halfway across, something like that. Yes, in the center here. It's timestamp 220106, 19 seconds of this file. Go ahead. Can you identify the persons in this particular video? Yes, this is Officer Ratliff, and this is Officer Melendez leaving, exiting Mr. Dent's driver's side of his vehicle. Does he appear to have anything in his hand? No. I'm sorry, give me just a second. Wait, stop. Stamp 220215, 128. Leave it, leave it south. Yes. Can you identify the persons in that particular <coughs> video? Yes. This is an Inkster officer, Anastasia Annika. This is Ratliff, Officer Ratliff. This is a trooper, can't tell the face, it's kind of blurry here. This is Zopko. From Zabko. Sergeant Zabko, Nicholas Zabko is a Dearborn Heights sergeant. This here is Officer Melendez. All right, go ahead. Stop it. This is timestamp 220220, 133 of this player. And Officer Melendez, did you see what he did in between the two, close, the two stopping points? Walk back. Okay. Was he in the vehicle? Uh, I was looking over here. I'm sorry. Back it up, back it up to 220218, 131 in this player. Twenty two oh two ten one twenty three of this player. Stop at twenty two oh two nineteen one thirty two in. 
Did somebody uh, enter that vehicle? Yes, Officer Melendez entered the passenger side. Searching the car at the same time he had. Yes. And who was it? Do you know, no, I was busy paying attention to this side. Okay. They're, they're an even okay. Um, they, uh, there's somebody on the right hand side. Go ahead, play it a little bit more. Maybe it'll help it. Yes, that was Anastasia Annika. Twenty-two or four forty-eight, nineteen seconds into this clip, which is clip three. Right. Stop. Did you see an individual go to the? Uh, it appeared to be the uh, passenger door of that particular car on the uh, in the front. You have to do it again. I'm sorry. I was looking over here. Back up to 22.04.43, 13 seconds into clip three. Twenty-two oh five oh seven, thirty seconds, thirty-seven seconds. Excuse me. And do you recognize the individual that's to the far right of the screen? Yes, Officer Melendez. Does he appear to have something in his hand? A baggie. That was the third time he's been on that car. Yes. And he's off camera for a moment. Is that correct? Yes. You can take down the video for a voice, but. Well, I'm sorry, there is one more. I'll go ahead. Sure. Um, bring up the booking uh, uh, video, please. The last portion we're having trouble on. Yes. <coughs> this is, I'm sorry, is this subject to the objection? No. That will be on it. This is the this is the clip entitled uh, CB Elevator from People's Exhibit Four, I believe, Judge. I'm sorry. People's Exhibit Four, clip CB Elevator. We are one <coughs> minute, two minutes and forty four seconds into that clip. Here it is. You know, it's going to be Can you tell me who's in that video yet? A little bit more. Okay. From Easter Fire Department EMS okay, workers. 
And that's Randazzle. And what time is this? It's on January the 28th, 2015 at 2235 hours. That is military time for 1035 p.m. That's when the MS finally shows up. Objection. Foundation. We know that they're there. We don't know when they showed This is also from Exhibit 4. This is the file entitled Cell 1. And time on the clip it is time stamped 2235, excuse me, 2234, 17, 17 minutes and 58 seconds into the clip. What are we saying right now? Mr. Dent sitting, I'm sorry, Mr. Dent sitting in the holding cell. Mr. Dent being handcuffed by Officer Randazzle and walking out of the cell. And had someone uh, come into the cell and interacted with uh, Mr. Dent immediately before that? Yes, the um, EMS um, worker. back on Exhibit 4, Clip, CB Elevator, this is time stamped 2237.50 and it is 26 minutes and 19 seconds into this clip.
we have stopped it at 27 minutes and 13 seconds of the clip. Time stamp 22.38.25. And what time is it showing, at least uh, on the video, the purported time? Upper left corner. Upper left corner? 22.13. 52 seconds, so that's 10.13. Oh, okay. The date is 1-28-2015. The time is 22-38-25, 10-38 p.m. And once again, the, the clocks aren't uh, totally synced, but that's the time that they say that happened. Is that correct? Correct. And what do you observe? I observe EMS off walker officers walk off the elevator. I observe Mr. Dent handcuffed in front, being escorted by Officer Randazzo. EMS work is behind him, and this is Anastasia Arnica. That's Did you drive the route that um, Mr. Dent did when the police were behind him? Yes, I canvassed the area, yes. And can you give us an idea of what uh, those streets are like? Uh, it was lots of potholes down that street. And were you able to travel in a straight line uh, and avoid the potholes? No. When did you travel? The day I got the case? When I started searching, looking for additional camera views and things of that nature, I drove down that street, Michigan Ave, that, the side street, as well as that street, down to the old precinct. You worked the road, is that correct? Yes. Do sometimes people react to uh, lights or spotlights hitting them from behind? Yes. And in your experience, what kind of reactions do they have? Mm -hmm. Objection. The same. When we played um, Sergeant Kreitzer's uh, video and saw Mr. Dent at the front of the video, uh, that audio was pretty poor. Can you explain to the jury why that is? Because the recorder, the, the recorder was capturing the inside of Officer Kreitzer's vehicle. And with the car, the windows rolled up, all you're going to capture is a faint voice of what's going on outside. Okay. So the mic wasn't on Sergeant Kreitzer, it was in the back seat of the car. Yes. Was that the only working mic uh, on any of the uh, scout cars from Angster? I think Officer Randazzo, on his way, Traveling to the scene, I think his in-car mic was captured because you could hear music or, or, or the, the radio, the dispatch radio, along with his sirens. Were there any uh, audio uh, uh, recordings uh, of the events in question, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the stop and the subsequent uh, laying out of hands? I don't know. You have to. I, I need you to read it. Do any of the coppers have a mic on them? On the outside, no. Okay. I have a question. Let's stand up and take a stretch. <laughs>
pray. My daughter. Goodbye. <laughs> Shouldn't have all that phone. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, Lieutenant Powell. How are you? I'm good, thank All you. Right. We met before, right? Yes. We talked about the case a little bit. Yes. All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we said generally, and then I'm going to take you through the video. Okay. 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 Um, uh, your investigation began in March of 2015, correct? Yes. March the 23rd? Yes, sir. And the day of the incident was January 28th, is that right? Yes. All right. Now, you said that you began your investigation because you had seen a video? I, I, I began it because I was requested to conduct an investigation. And who requested that? Chief Yost requested Chief. through the Michigan State Police that an investigation be conducted. Okay. An independent investigation, independent of Chief Yost, who was the Chief of Police in Inkster. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Prior to that time, had you heard about this case? Not at all. Had you seen anything on TV? Nope. Had you seen Mr. Dent on TV? Nope. All right. Were you aware at the time that your investigation began of whether or not Mr. Dent had complained to the Inkster Police Department as a result of being uh, forcefully arrested and the injuries that he sustained? No. There is a procedure, do you know? Uh, or do you not, that there was a, uh, a procedure where citizens can make complaints? He, yes. But he, he did not make one to the Inkster Police Department that you were aware of in your investigation? Correct. All right. Now, when force is used in a situation where police officers are involved, is there something that the police officer themselves are supposed to do? They're supposed to report it and document it, yes. You were aware, were you not, that a use of force memo was filed by Officer Melendez on the date in question? I'm aware now. At, you know, after I reviewed uh, all the... results of your investigation, you're the investigator. Yes, in case, yes, yes, yes. And, and you also know <coughs> that Officer Melendez had filed a very detailed statement of what had occurred. Is that right? His police report, yes. And that police report was filed immediately on the day of the arrest? Yes. Okay. And, and you were aware of that when you asked Officer Melendez to make a statement? Yes. Okay. And you were aware of the fact that he had taken a position in his report that he was... I'm going to object on a hearsay. Not hearsay. It goes now, to an investigation. If you're talking about what went into the report, it certainly is hearsay. Judge, I heard a question asked that Mr. Melendez was asked to come see this officer, and she's implying that he didn't relying on his Fifth Amendment privilege, and yet he's made statements from the very beginning about what happened in this case. And that's what well, I want to get into. I'm not going to let you go into the substance of the statement. It's hearsay, irrespective of the question that was asked. Go on. All right. It's my intention to challenge the investigation in this case, Judge, and I will go on, but I want to ask questions about her investigation. You may. All but right. You cannot get into the substance of what your client said. It's, it's hearsay. Okay. You were aware that Floyd Dent was prosecuted in this case before the case was dismissed by this prosecutor? Yes. Okay. You were aware of the fact that another what officer... The Floyd County prosecutor. I did point to you, but in your general sense, <coughs> in your much bigger or larger sense. Just keep going. Go ahead. Next question. He was, he was, a warrant was signed? Yes. He went to preliminary examination? Yes. All right, he was bound over on at least one of the charges. Yes, sir. He right. did. Meaning Mr. Dent. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, you begin your investigation. At this point now, you're well over a month after the fact. Is that right? Two months, yes. Two months after yeah. the fact. Yes. You knew that Chief Yost had already begun an investigation, is that correct? Yes. And at any point in time, once you were involved, was she told to stand down? Oh, I can't tell nobody what to do. I can't tell the chief to not do anything. So I didn't give her any commands or requests. No. She was not told to stand down? 
If she was, it wasn't by me. Okay. And then what you did is you gathered all the materials. Yes. And those materials included police reports, correct? Yes. Which included Mr. Melendez's statement. Yes. Um, uh, um, uh, the complete investigative file, including the videos and so forth. Yes. Right. You said you attempted to find other information. Yes. Right. And that is other videos. And, and the reason why you were not able to obtain it, no fault of Mr. Melendez, it was just time that passed and you were not able to get materials that usually are not kept longer than mine. Correct. All right. Now, we've seen the video. We've seen the police officers that were in the video. Yes. You participated, did you not, in an investigative subpoena process where every one of those officers was called in and asked to be sworn under oath. Yes. And who was there? It was Mr. Donaldson Sr. At different times. All the time it was Donaldson and myself. Every and time. sometimes Mr. Carmen DeFranco, DeFranco, and it's sometimes Christine Col Colwall right. and Carmen DeFranco, sometimes together, sometimes separate. And you? And me. And you interviewed these officers, correct? We did, yes. And, and they came in and they made statements under oath? Yes. And they were told, in essence, they hadn't done anything wrong? Yes. Including Sergeant Kreitzer? Yes. And including uh, uh, Officer Randy Aslow? Yes. Officer Zielinowski came in as well, is that right? Yes. He testified under oath, is that right? Yes. And he was Mr. Melendez's partner, is yes. that correct? Yes. He made a statement as well. Yes. Yeah. There were a bunch of police officers that we see in the video, yes. right? There was a video camera that was showing what it is that that camera saw. Yes. Okay. Um, obviously, the police officers who were there were aware of the fact that a camera was on. Would you agree? I would say those who had a camera going in their car were aware of a camera going on. Okay. Is there anything on Officer Melendez's car that would have shown a red light if the camera was on? On that? From, let's say I'm sitting outside the car and looking in, a red light, uh, a bright red light, laser-like light would be showing out. I don't know how their camera system functions. So, the so the best we can do is to say that at least the officers who were there, especially this person, Officer Melendez, he would have known that his video was on. Exactly. He well, didn't turn his question, and so we can know for the judges of the fact. Normally, routine for the Michigan State Police, do you okay. have dash cams? Yes. How does the dash cam work? Do you have to put the key in and cut it on, and cut it off whenever you want to? Well, how does it work? They can switch it on and switch they it. Being on. I'm sorry. The troopers can, you can, if you're driving a patrol car, whether it's a trooper, sergeant, or whatever rank, you can flip on or flip off manually these cameras and act, but they key on automatically at certain instances. When you activate your lights and sirens, you can, they can manually operate it, but it's certain keys that automatically operate it lights and sirens, certain switches. So it's just depending on the department and how their machines function. But, no, but at least with the Michigan State Police, once that lights and siren is on, that dash cam's on. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay, very good. And uh, when, I'm just asking you, okay. when you all got these dash cams, were you trained with them to know that or was it like a secret or something, just only big people? <laughs> oh, they're, it's trained. So you're trained. Knows, you put your key in that car and you're a police, you know yes. that that dash yes. cam's on. Yes. Okay, go ahead. And the implication is, ma'am, that if you know that that light's on, that that you're going to be on video and you're going to be seen doing what it is that you're doing in front of that camera. Yes. All right. Now, um, we saw a lot of police officers that were involved in this. There were Michigan State police officers. There was one police officer that you didn't identify. Do you remember a trooper, Craig? Yes. Remember seeing him? at or around that car? Yes. You even see him going in and looking into that car. Yes. Right. I'm going to get into that in a little bit because okay. I want to go through the video with okay. you. But um, um, when the prosecutor subpoena process took place, was there anybody that was called in without, uh, without being sworn? 
um, not in the investigative, um, I'm sorry, not with the investigative subpoena process. Trooper Skeens was not available at the time we were doing investigative subpoenas, so I was asked to do a recorded interview of okay. Trooper Skeens. So he's the only one that only didn't one. have a... And that's of the police officers? Yes. Was Mr. Dent given a subpoena? Yes. Did Mr. Dent come in under yes. oath? I don't know if it was under oath. We interviewed him. No, it wasn't under oath. Okay. Did Ms. And who was present in that room? Um, there was myself, Bob Donaldson, Carmen DeFranco. Um, I believe it was Mr. Dent, Gregory Rowe, which was his attorney. Um, there was Detective Sergeant Ponzetti. She is Sunshine Ponzetti. And... Um, uh, FBI agent Mike Labisco. Um, Ponzetti is deputized on the FBI Public Corruption Task Force now, so her and the, the FBI agent were together. It might have been Christine Cole, but I'm not certain. I, I, I don't recall. All right. Lengthly interview. I just want to know, Christine Cole is not going to be called as a witness issue. No, Judge. I'm afraid of her. Okay, She's standing she right over She's there. over there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just kidding. Kidding that she was on there, kidding that you were afraid of her. I'm afraid of her. Okay. All right. Um, if she stands up, you'll know why she's got big biceps. Ask the question. <laughs> Ma'am. Yes. The point I'm trying to make is Mr. Dent wasn't placed under oath, was he? No. Mr. Dent was allowed to come in with his lawyer. Yes. And in that interview, his lawyer was interjecting himself, wasn't he? Yes. You were aware of the fact that he and his lawyer were on TV complaining about what happened in this case. Yes. He and his lawyer were on TV complaining and showing video. Yes. And you saw those videos. Yes. You only saw part of what it is that happened that night with those videos. Isn't that right? Oh, you said about, I saw all the video. You said about. On TV. On TV, yes. Mr. Yes. Wall was doing, he was getting up there and saying whatever he was yes. saying. Right. Yes. Yes. Now. You were aware that Mr. Roll was his civil lawyer? No, he was his criminal to start, from what okay, I understand. Okay, let's get away, just let's keep going his lawyer. That's all we're going to say he was, okay? Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Um, you were aware of the fact that Mr. Denner made many statements on television. Were you? Yes. And that some of those statements were inconsistent with what it was that he was telling you. I was about to drop. You can't. It was your job to make sure and determine whether or not a crime had been committed. Isn't that right? I investigated. The prosecutor's office determined that. Okay, but you're investigating and making a determination without any judgments whatsoever. Right. Isn't one of the things that you would do to determine whether or not a person that was complaining actually had a justifiable complaint is to see whether or not they were consistent in what it was that they said? Yes. Were you aware of the fact that he had been he, inconsistent on TV with what he was telling you he, and Mr. Donaldson, me and Mr. Dent? He, he can impeach Mr. Dent however he likes, but not this way. Goes to the investigation, oh, Judge. Oh, I'll allow it couched in terms of the investigation. Did you remember the question? Uh, no, can you repeat? You knew that he was saying things that weren't the same as what he was telling you and Mr. Donaldson. Not the exact same, no. Okay. I, I didn't right. watch any of them in length, well, in totality. Let's, let's talk about it. Okay. Okay. Did he tell... You can't get into the content of it. Okay. Just let him ask. Well, that's what Go he's ahead. doing. Once he spits it out, it's out. Oh, well, let's just see what he says. Ma'am, in the context of your investigation... Yes. Okay. You heard him say what he said in, with you and Mr. Donaldson, right? Yes. Okay. He didn't say anything, sir. You gotta wait till he finishes. Go ahead. You were aware of the fact that on television he'd said things differently than what he has told you in the meeting that you had with him and Mr. Donaldson and Mr. Mr. Del Vero. You know, I didn't play, I don't play on words, sir. It, 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 his statements seem to be consistent to me from what I saw. Like I said, I didn't sit back and watch every news clip with him or anybody else, and I don't know the totality of what was stated. I heard that he was on TV a few times. It's a couple of times I saw a couple of clips, but I did not see the entire interview of, of that. 
I don't want to get into anything mm -hmm. you didn't see. Okay. I don't want to get into anything that was that, 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 that somebody else told you. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, when you saw those clips on TV, did he tell you the exact same thing as he told you when he was with Mr. Donaldson? Yes, I don't. I'm going to have to say no because I didn't see him in their entirety. I don't know how many times I could say it. All right. Here you go. Hold on. I'll take it. Now, you said you went and canvassed the neighborhood. You tried to figure out whether there was videos. Yes. You had heard him say, <coughs> Who? Mr. Dance, talk about the lighting. And as a result of that, you went out I'm and gonna, looked. I'm going to object. He can't put in Mr. Dance. I don't know why nobody out there talking about here, but in the media. Okay. As a result of him talking about lighting, did you do an investigation yourself? Okay, okay. Same All right. I want to focus this in relationship to your investigation. Well, I don't think he can just say, because it's your investigation, I can ask you any hearsay I want. Well, let him ask the question. Go ahead. You know we're too old to be jumping up and down all the time, and I, I think Mr. Donaldson should stop doing that. Okay. All right. Well, stop asking him. Maybe he made them jump up. <laughs> I'll do my best. Did you check out the street lights? No. You didn't see whether or not the street was well lit? I could see it on the video. Okay, but you didn't go out there. No, I went to look for video in the daytime. I didn't go out there that you know, at night looking for lighting. I could see the light in the video. Okay. So wait a minute, hold on for a minute, that's just important. When you redrove that area, it was in the daytime. It was daytime. I was, it was not nighttime. It was not nighttime. And when you redrove it, you said that you found potholes. They right? found me, yes. Right. <laughs> they found you. This was in April of, uh, of 2015? It was March 2015 when I got the case. I got the case on March 23rd. And what about the thaw? What about the thaw? Had there been a spring thaw at that time? Do you know? Do you remember? I don't. Yeah, I can be honest. Yes, I do remember. And it was a spring thaw. Okay. And you know what happens to roads when you have a spring thaw? Yep. Okay. Yes, I do. What? Now, you're the potholes become horrendous. They get bigger? They get bigger. You can fall into them. Okay. Now, did you travel the entire um, um, uh, distance on park? Yes. And did you notice that the roads had gotten better after you go past Hill Street? Yes, into that block where the old precinct was? Yes. yes. Okay, and that's where, and, and before that, that one block before the precinct. Yes. From the stop sign to the precinct, th that road is a better road, isn't it? The stop sign to, what stop sign are you talking about? Because two stops. The last Hill stop Street, sign? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It is better. All right. And so your testimony about the potholes, that would have gone before Hill Street? Yes, I'm not saying it was totally clear, but it was better. I don't, you know, I'm not going to try to recall how many potholes was where, but um, it was better traveled than the other one. Okay. The other street. Than the other street. All right. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. You sure? On this issue. Okay. All right. And it relates to stopping of individuals who are on the road. Mr. Dent was traveling on, on, a, on a public highway, is that right? Yes. You have to obey all kinds of laws as it relates to that, correct? Yes. One of the laws that you have to comply with, there's, there's turn signal laws, correct? Yes. Uh, does a police officer have a right to stop a car if they have not used their turn signal? Yes. Does a police officer have a right to stop a car if he's, if he's swerving? Yes. Does a police officer have a right to stop a car? if uh, they're traveling too fast? Yes. And what if they blow a stop sign? Yes. Okay, all of those reasons are reasons upon which a police officer justifiably has the right to stop, in your opinion, is that right? Yes. If the person does not stop right away, is that a basis upon which to stop them? If they don't stop right away? Yes. Let's well, you're already trying to stop them, so... Well, let's, let's say this is a situation in particular that okay. there was a 44 second time frame within which lights were activated and Mr. Dent stopped his car. Would you agree with my time frame? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you see him traveling and as he's traveling he's going uh, uh, down the street uh, and not paying attention to the lights that are flashing behind him in his rearview mirror. 
arguably. Okay, arguably, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, one not stopping was called out, right? Yes. You heard that on the, on the audio that the jury hasn't heard yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just like you heard the audio, one, one fighting? Yes. And and, uh, and and I'm going to get into that when I do the video with you. But if a person who is stopped starts fumbling around in the car, there's a term that we lawyers use, police officers use it. Can you tell me what it is? Furtive gestures? Yes. And what is a furtive gesture? It could be somebody reaching. It could be... Um, Somebody moved the body movement. I mean, it could be a number of things. And, and, and the idea of a furtive gesture is it puts the officer on alert that there's a potential of something. Yes. Okay. And can you tell the jury what that potential of something might be? Um, somebody could be potentially um, trying to hide a weapon, trying to hide contraband, trying to... Contraband, what's that? Contraband could be narcotics of any kind. Okay. okay. And what then at that point would a reasonable officer do if they saw somebody that was engaged in a furtive gesture? They would call it out. Um, call it out. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's police talk. They would call, contact dispatch, let them know the location, the circumstances, um, maybe even if a license plate if they have one to call, you know, a license plate to dictate. And... Um, just be, be on high alert, alert. I mean, it causes you to be on high alert. High alert meaning high alert for potential for danger. Yes. High alert for the potential that maybe you or your partner might get hurt. Yes. And so we saw Officer Melendez with his gun out when he approached the car. Yes. Okay. It was at his side, correct? Correct. He didn't point it until a little bit later in the clip, right? Yes. From the video that we saw, and I guess we ought to get ready to cue that up, Mr. Donaldson. And you I want to cue up. Own video team? Your Honor, Mr. Donaldson's Jr. goes both ways. <laughs> That's the term I've already missed for. Let's do it. I mean, uh, let's cut the lights off. Your Honor, can I can I get a cup of water, please? Take a little break. Please, just just don't. I'll leave your number eight. I'll take a little break. Okay. Any time to try to. All right, very good. Let's take a two minute recess. Thank you. Come right back. Well, I paid you now. She never gave me the call. No, I paid my aunt. I'll call now. You called John. Yeah, you had me up. You know where I was. Just let her call John. If he's even there. Joe, the phone Yeah.